We're live, Pierre. Welcome back to the early edition of the Hockey Nation Live Show. This is your coach, Coach Frenchy, directly from the Sunshine State. And we have to go all the way to go to the West Coast to find a co-host of Michael B. Villano. Oh, 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 oh. Great, Pierre. We actually had a busy day the last 24 hours. Sorry again? We actually had a lot of news the last 24 hours. I know. You are the man. <laughs> um, so some of the things that happened, the, the lead thing that I noticed was that your buddy Thomas Tatar signed a two-year deal with the Devils. Um, I think that's probably a good move for them, right? Like they have, they're trying to give time to the younger guys. He, We know he can score 20 goals. You have a, you a voice in behind the back. I have a voice. There's nobody else here. <laughs> Hopefully there's no echo. Is it in your headset? I don't know what's going on. Maybe it's a No, I, I heard another voice behind really? you somewhere. Are you telling me there's a ghost in my room? <laughs> Hold on. I have some things going on around. That's not me. <laughs> Um, so this, to me, honestly, like I was kind of surprised. It was me. <laughs> it was you, yeah, because I don't hear anything. Um, so, you know, Thomas Tatar, we know he's capable of getting like, you know, 20, 25 goals. He's a very consistent point producer. He didn't really get into the playoffs with Montreal, which was interesting during their run. He's always, for me, been kind of like he's more of a second line player, sometimes because he he falls to the third. But. He's not like an impact player, but he can play with really good players. I was actually surprised at the amount he got. And I guess based upon being a 20 goal score, 4.5 is reasonable, but I thought you'd get a lot. I think for me at that amount is because he got only two years. And that's maybe the reasonable behind that $4.5 million. The second thing is a red flag, Michael. Uh, if you look about him, if he goes start with Detroit, then after that, he go to Vegas. And after that, he go to Montreal. Now he's going to Devils. And when you drop a player like him, score an average of five seasons at 20 goalie plus, and it's uh, every two, three years, you know what kind of player he is? He pissed off coach. That's what he is. He really pissed what? off all the time the coach because all the crappy turnover he create per game, where he turn around and then he got a goal. And then boom, another crappy turnover. Boom, another goal over there. So... Um, I heard this because I was I was listening. Um, I, I can see that he, NHL Network, and yeah. uh, I think it was Ken Danico or someone like him. Jeez, I don't remember who it was, but he was said like, "All right, he can't score twenty goals, but the coach behind the bench is going to kill him after the game because he make two <laughs> stupid penalty uh, yeah. turnover." Then and, and sometimes it's not like you don't have to be a turnover, Michael, on the and um, find the net. It could be a turnover in the, the neutral zone that create now a three versus two, and then the score. Does it make sense? Like not like he keep yeah. the puck right away, yeah. but that's what a kind of player. And if you see him, and I realize, uh, you know what, he is right because remember when he went to Vegas, he got a big trade over them. I guess they gave him a first round they pick to Detroit yeah. or Dakar, and yeah. he start, and then he disappear again during the playoff. You have yeah. a reason behind that, you can't, and that time was gonna. That, that's probably a good assessment. Like for me, he's an opportunistic player. He's smaller, so he can't win battles for the puck. He's 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 looking for opportunities, and sometimes you're right. A lot of what he does is a fit, what I call a 50-50 play. And the problem with that is, as a coach, you want 90-10. You want him to make decisions with the puck that make sure that you maintain possession. And he doesn't always do that. I think he's you know he's opportunistic. He's a smaller player that survives because of that he can shoot the puck but I, I find that he scores goals that um he doesn't create the opportunity necessarily he's taking advantage of a mistake but he in doing so you're right i think he creates mistakes the other way because the not, thing i, I would say I, I would follow your statement because i think you said a good thing but i would say also at that time the prototype of play he is like he's he's not big right he's 510 yeah. and 185 everything at good speed and everything like that yeah. the problem i get with him is he don't produce on power play where he yeah. should because he's really one way player it's not like at both ways all the time so he he, he cannot score on power play two goal last right. year uh, you have no not many points 
and that's the problem I see with him because he he have the guy he have a chin as a you know he's a good skater he's a good second link yeah, he's, he's doing that good. but I thought he would produce more on power play where he he does not and that's for it's another he he doesn't that's not, that's not good for him on his resume when you talk about him but again he can score twenty goals but one the physicality step up and he, um, he, 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 he have tendons to uh, disappear for sure. Absolutely. And I think this was always my argument. Like I realized people in Montreal saw him when he had big points there and he, it was like, Oh, he's a, he was, a, a lot of, you know, there was talk at the time. He's the best player in Montreal. And I'm like, guys, this guy's not a good, like he's a good player, but he's not like an impactful player. And if he's your top player, you're in trouble. <laughs> like in Detroit, he fit very well with Gustav Nyquist. Nyquist was a similar frame, but Nyquist possessed the puck a lot better. And, and he would, you know, but they would create, you know, that would get him opportunities. So they were a good one, two punch kind of on the second or the third line. And as he moved up the lineup, it created more and more problems. And, and I think that's just the reality of it. He's not a bad player. There's not a lot of guys that can score 20 goals consistently like he can. I mean, if you look at, you know, he's, since he came in the league, 19 goals, 29 goals, 21 goals, 25 goals, 20 goals, 25, 22. So he, he's, you know, you're going to get 20 goals out of the guy. It's you're going to get this. You're going to get about 40 points. Yeah. Uh, the problem for me is another red flag, Michael. Uh, Devils trouble the last couple of years. They are numbers 25, 27, 28, again, go against. So it's yeah. not a, a team really well on, on the defensive or on the – you know, protect in the park and they don't get, so they give a lot of goals. That's not helping yeah. to get Thomas Tatar on the ice during that time over there. Uh, and I think he took benefit. Of, I don't say that, but I don't want to, but I think he took advantage to be with Philip Danu around him. So sometime mm -hmm. he may be create a turnover more, but he don't give a goal there. But yeah. that's my point over all this. But, you know, yep. It's a two year right now, 4.5, a turnover for the for Devils. For me, my girl, I said this last night, is the prototype that is going to die in KHL or SHL on the overseas at 34, 35, 36 years old. I I think he helps them in the short term. When if when they get more and more competitive and their younger guys get better and the pressure's on, you know, he'll become less valuable to them. But right now, like, he serves a great role. Like, you know, if he can play with Nico Hushar, who is a good two-way centerman, and Jesper Bratt is a good, fast two-way player that I don't think Jesper I had no Bratt problem to put him on the first line with uh, Hughes and Sharakovic now. Maybe. You know, I, I think that's where he starts to get overmatched, though. Like, you've already got a smaller guy in Jack Hughes. Sharakovic, I don't think, is like a two-way type guy. Yanni Kukunen's on that line to get the puck. And, and that's probably why they're slotting him up there. Miles Wood is another guy who's very similar to Blake Coleman, right? Like he's a big guy, a little bit bigger than Coleman, but he'll do some gritty stuff and he'll score goals. Tatar, to me, is perfect for the second line. He's perfect. Even for the third line, he'll still get his points. And I think you're right. With Dano, Dano was, you know, obviously defensively responsible, but I don't think Dano's a great playmaker, distributor to the puck. And that's okay with Thomas Tatar. No, it was just about like that. That know what he was saving his life more often on the turnover on the defensive exactly. side. That's, that's, that's why Thomas Carr did so well. You know, it was such a good fit, right? Uh, he, he, you know, he's going to cheat a little bit. He's going to be, but again, he's a good scorer. It's a, it's a, it's the guy can score 20, 25 goals. So it'll be interesting to see him over there yeah. for sure. So, uh, so good morning to Bud the Monkey. Thank you for joining us. Get his own sound effect. Um, on the monkey. Yeah, and of course, Nicolas, bon matin. Bon, bon vendredi, everybody. Happy Friday, everybody. Thanks, Kimberly, to be back. Hopefully, your flat tire is fixed and you're ready to rock and roll the, your day today. She got a flat tire last night, my oh, coach. No. <laughs> so uh, that's happening. And Frank Zalazar, directly today, Michael, is on your area, by the way. Frank is oh. in California this morning. Oh, cool. uh, visit somewhere. I don't know. He said this okay. last night. So, um, it's Friday, my girl. It's um, off season. Uh, it's August six, and I know we're not going to get a lot of people around here. That's all about the next August going to be that way over there. So uh, we expect that. 
But uh, again, we appreciate for everybody. The one hour in the house, we tell you, thank you so much to join us. And then also don't forget to click on the likes. That'd be awesome. We will really appreciate. And uh, if you can do that before you leave at some point. And um, no show tonight, Michael. No. No, uh, no uh, power play. I'm going to be back tomorrow and for Sunday at 11 yeah. o'clock Eastern time. But cool. uh, tonight I have... Uh, my uh, re team reunion of two years state state kind of championship. So uh, we met uh, because of COVID last year when we won the state championship, uh, we did not have a chance to celebrate because the COVID. Now we do it tonight, and uh, okay. it's funny all those kids now are the college or play right. junior. <laughs> so uh, it'll be interesting to see that. I didn't see um, m not many of them since like uh, last season. So it'll be interesting to see that tonight and. Uh, yeah. I'm seeing kids I coach that are not kids anymore. They're retiring. <laughs> yeah, that's crazy to see that, right? So, uh, but, uh, you know, it would be interesting to see them, and that, that would be the, the reason why we don't have the show live tonight. But the last one was pretty good. Uh, the, the funny thing, Michael, everybody show up at 9.45 for the quiz. <laughs> oh, wow. Yeah, I think the quiz we, is awesome. like Last night, I've been honest with you, we have about, like, uh, at least 14 people play the quiz last night, Michael. That's awesome. That's funny uh, to see that. Like they, they love the quiz for now. Patrice Bergeron, super chat. Thank you so much. Wow, Canadian ladies win gold. Where? Patrice Bergeron, son. Wow, thank you, sir. Appreciate that. Yeah, the soccer team, I call it. Can team Canada won the, the gold this morning on the penalty shot uh, at Tokyo. And that's a big, wow. big news around the NHL, NHL, around the country today. I got a lot of on the Twitter account, uh, a lot of news about wow. that. So congratulations. I think it's the first time for the Team Canada to win the, the, yeah. the gold, at least like for yeah. what I know. Uh, so um, good to that's see amazing. the Canada's developing, and not only in hockey now, but other sport. And uh, to step up to win the, the cup, I think that's pretty good to see that that's for sure. That's really interesting. So, I mean... You know, a few years ago, they had a real big battle versus the U.S. team. And the one thing you saw about Canada was they were tough as nails. <laughs> like the Canadian women were like, there's that one girl, I think his name's Christine. Her name was Christine Sinclair. And it was like she thought she was playing hockey, man. Like she was a wall. She body checked people to the ground. We just beat Stefan's member this morning. Just kidding. Yeah. Well, I mean, that's. I think the U.S. lost early, though, right? The U.S. is having some psychological problems across the board. <laughs> yeah, I know. The, the PSYOP is working, Pierre. They're getting in every, in the U.S.'s head. Oh, we don't have to try so hard. <laughs> yep. Um, uh, top uh, won again last night uh, the, the quiz with Mr. Good. Michael yeah. Rosenblatt. So uh, that would be good to see him again this morning. My Enotap, he won the biggest now become. And then for Patrice, Patrice have a big game today. Play the final in Colorado. And finally, uh, Kimberly looked like her car fixed. He waited two hours. And now she's ready to rock and roll her day now with the car. So they lost to Canada. Is that who beat them? The U.S.? The USC, yeah, I think. I haven't paid any attention. I don't really even care about this Olympics. I think they won the bronze, but again, I, I don't know. There's Good. so many things Canada, going on. Man. That is amazing. I'm really excited for that because that, to your point, that that's uh, phenomenal development. <laughs> it's funny sometimes because I, I saw uh, somewhere like uh, someone won the from Canada. The I don't know the the running or something like that. I don't not not the degrees, but another one. He could be the walk running i don't know how they call it anyway oh, and the guy looked like he's from ethiopia and but he he, he represents canada so i'm a little bit confusing about those stuff like That's that canada but, though right canada's a multicultural society so. yeah it's called mohammed uh mohammed uh he's from i don't know but uh, it's yeah. funny to see that yeah, that's the one thing about Canada. I think that in some ways it got right, which is the idea of a multicultural society. You know, coming I, from Canada, the U.S., like there. You know, like, you think about this, like I, I just now see that the, the, the soccer, Michael. But I don't think you you write about this. Look, the tennis, how he de they developed the tennis for the last fifteen years. Uh, you know, on both ways, like on the fit, on the on the women and the men. Now, the tennis represent very well. Canada is represent very well now in the top. Uh, TPA tennis now and professional. So, and then we have Sly on the key on the bowling, still the top nine in the Canada. <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> uh, good luck, Patrick. 
Uh, Patrice, I wish you the best about it. Thanks again for the super chat. Always a pleasure to have you, Patrice, the, the, the David Pasnak and the Brett Marshall son. Um, uh, someone said, that, who do you believe the first thing to bring the cup in Canada? To bring what? To bring the Stanley Cup. Who do, you, who do you believe is going to win the Stanley Cup in Canada? Oh, next? I don't know. I mean, I think it's a mess. I think there's problems with every Canadian team right now. It it would not shock me. <laughs> uh, it's so hard. There's gaps on all those teams, Pierre. I mean, you would. I. Well, the problem, Michael, you, you compete like 17 versus 25, right? So you have the, right there. It's not easy to win over there. But if you think about one team right now, I believe. Um, You know, I, I, I don't know why the Edmonton is not better at the, what they are, uh, the honestly. Uh, the but like the Jet right now, Michael, are a little bit better as the Senator. But in three years, Senator is going to be have an amazing, great team. It's uh, this, you know, they all have potential, right? And I think that right now they're all fairly well run, which you couldn't always say. And there's a weird element in Canada with the politics, right? Like it's like it's like reality TV. And I think that affects how much exposure the players get. And I think that there's a distraction there. And then there's politics inside the organizations that are a little bit weird. Right. So I think that affects them as opposed to you get a Tampa and they're focused on one thing. It's like, let's win. And sometimes you get distracted in Canadian teams because there's news, radio, sports, everything is hockey. <laughs> so I think there's an element there of that. Right. And then there's this angst that is like, you've got to win. You're never going to win. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so it's just like, it's a little weird element, right? So I, I think if you look on paper, Edmonton is, well, I they're very close. But he's right about that. Of course he is. It's just I like, I, I, I think that's the issue is the goaltending is the final piece. Like their, their D is improved, but it's not quite good enough, right? Like you would need a career year from a Duncan Keith. You would need a throwback year from Duncan Keith in a number four role. You would need Darnell Nurse to keep playing the way he's played so far in the past year. And, I, and I, that's I think for me, Michael, it's not that I think for Edmonton is goaltending. And then I would say after that, 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 that bottom six over there have that kind of the, the, uh, the four checking every time like that to bring that part over there. So I think for me, um, that would be my biggest concern about that one over there because they don't have anybody after you're that. They are, you know, what I mean, like they don't have that kind of the, the, the goaltender where they can bring up all the way over there. So, if they had signed Jakob Markstrom, I would say they're a step closer. If they had just gone all in, the contract he got from Calgary was friggin' reasonable. Like, you know, he sh you should have gone the extra mile and got that contract. That was totally reasonable. So to play hardball with the guy that's your missing piece, I think it was stupid. So now they got to find another guy. They just traded away from a guy that could be that guy in four or five years. So you don't have that guy. <laughs> you know, like they, they've got to do something. I think they've done some good stuff, right? Like I think they brought in improved on the forward line. So, but I don't know, is this the best Canadian team? I mean, They've shown nothing. I think I don't like the third line. So that's my problem I have with oh, that part over there. The third line is not strong enough really? uh, to compete. Uh, and then, oh. secondly, I think the, the CC contract is too long for yeah. what they gave to I, him. I don't think he's a good defenseman. He's not going to help them the way they need. I like Fogel. I like Cassian. I like Derek Ryan, but he's more fourth. Josh Archibald is useful. You know, you would like to see one more. I don't know. I really like the way Cassian plays in the playoffs. Like he played, he can be a very useful player, but I think you're right. Like having, it just depends, you know, does Ryan McLeod, he looked good last year. Does he be, end up being that prototypical third line centerman that can contribute a little bit, flex up to the second line. If he does, then your, your problem solved. If not, they probably got to do something there, but it's not like a glaring hole, right? Derek Ryan's very reliable and we know he can score if you give him time. Well, I think if you look about the the sec, third line, four line, I think the four gel is good. He, he set up a good line with it, right? But after that, it's not good enough to compete with Ashubal and McLeod yet. 
Uh, they would be like, you know, they need a better, like, you think about Washington, it's last LR over there. You think about Tampa, it's Yannick Gord over right. there, right? It's, it's a question mark for sure. And you I know what I mean? Like, uh, like Toronto have curved foot at that position over there. So that that's my point. I don't say they are bad. They, that If you want to compete to go like a long longevity in, this, in the playoff, that's yeah. what you need when you get there. I love the Warren for jail over there for sure. Pick, if yeah. they can get somewhere else, like Derek Ryan is fine over there. Derek, Derek Ryan is going to do like what Ned Thompson does. All well, those four line pick up, face off every time. That that's a good yeah. situation over there. Yeah, he's useful. My problem they did last season is like yeah. they overexpose uh, the two the two line like Tressel and McDavid every two shifts during the playoff. It was too yeah. much for them. That's what they need to make a little bit balance. And the winner, the Stanley Cup, Michael, have more the balance in the lineup. I, that, I think that's what they're looking for. That's what they need about that one over there. Uh, for, uh, you know, Derek Ryan is just like the guys can score five, eight, ten goals. But again, it's more about the face off. I don't know if he can see his face off or that one. But yeah, that's what a tie the player two right. ways, everything like that. His face off percentage is over 52%. You see, 52, 52, 56, 58, 55, 59. So that's a good additional player over there for sure. That's what they need. But again, uh, Zach, um, Zach uh, Cashin is, is fine in the four line if you play his role. Yeah. That's fine with him because that's what kind of line with Matt Martin has everything on that rate. Yeah. And then the left side, I'm not remember who he was there, but I think they can improve that line over there. Um, yeah, I think that would be helping a little bit more about that. Cahun is not there anymore, I believe. No, this is old. No, okay, so I'm good. I think that's um, senior INH management for that long would be backfire. I'm not worried about RNH. Um, I'll be honest with you. I mean, it would be uh, difficult for him uh, because the injury problem they can get with time about that one over there. So for yeah. me, that's what I, f I feel like, but um, the situation with them. So we would be interesting about that one over there for the, uh, but RNH is going to be fine uh, at that moment for sure. Don't miss a lot of game, Michael. If you follow RNH, you have a very good longevity on the, on the, yeah. on the, yeah. He'll disappear for little stretches offensively. They like him defensively. I don't love him. I've never been a huge fan, but if you compare him to his contemporaries, you know, he, he's a very good player, and that's a hard player to replace if you let him go. I, I, I really wonder out loud, does Vancouver leapfrog? If, you know, if Connor Garland comes in and does what he does, Pod Colson comes in and solidifies the third line with Dickinson and Pearson. And we know Niels Hoaglander looked great last year, and he's going to take another step. So even though they missed the playoffs, they are maybe capable, and it really depends on – I think their goaltending is better. You know, Halak yeah. and Demko could – you know, it really depends on the upside of Demko. But I think he's better than any of Edmonton's goalies, and they have good forward depth, and I think their D is improved. So they, they could surprise us. You know, they got Oliver ekman Larson, They brought back Hamonic. They picked up pool. The, the, the problem is the defenseman, right? They don't have the second defenseman over there. So that's what a problem they got right there. They have too many third and fourth defensemen over there. I'm on it. OEL is a number two? Not really. He he struggles so much for the last two years. It's terrible when you see him. What? <laughs> I think he struggles as a number one, and I think he was overplayed. If you play him 18, 19 minutes. Well, a he game, was uh, number two in, in Arizona because of Chink Run, uh, Chick Run. Pick up his, his spot over there. Last but year. again, uh, you're not going to see a big chance with Ekman Larson. You're going to see that kind of a 20 point, a 7.25, Michael. That's my problem I have with that one over there. And he signed for until 2027. So um, I'll just make a video about the bad overpriced yeah. contract. I think that's one over there. So for me, Vancouver, I wish they have a defenseman number two. Uh, that way, that would be better. Uh, to satisfy their defensemen, uh, that's what they're missing on on my book over there. I don't know. I I believe he's a real high end player that was just overused. I think it'll help him going to Vancouver. He's not perfect. If he was paid six point five million, he'd be very happy. <laughs> His contract's stupid, right? <laughs> hey, it's eight point twenty five, and and yeah, I was gonna five. pick one million dollars on that contract over there. Right. So if, if he's a six and a half million dollar defenseman, you're like, wow, he's really good. 
It, it's just I don't see. I, I believe his best his best days are behind him. That's my concern about him. We're gonna find out. You might, you know, it's possible. He, you know, I think he wasted them in Arizona. You know, you look at Calgary, I think there's some question marks around Sean Monaghan. And, but otherwise, you've got to say they've improved on forward. I think the Coleman contract, regardless of what you think, if that guy's a 20-goal scorer, you're pretty happy. On D, they lost Giordano, so that hurts. But you've still got Hanfin, Tanev, Anderson, Zadorov. And I think these guys are all in the right chair. Yusuf Valamaki can move up this ladder. He'll, he'll go over Zadorov. He'll go over, I bet you, Hanfin at some point. And it might be this year because he's a very capable guy on a power play. He's got a good shot. He can skate and make good first pass. And he's big. He's like 6'3". And he's got that little bit of finished grit. Shillington's had a hard time, but there's other players in there that can come in. And then you think Markstrom's a pretty high-end goalie. So it wouldn't surprise me to see Calgary turn it around. But I think it really depends on what happens with Monaghan. Um. I'm I'm still not sure about that part over there. Um, I, that is it's the culture, the brand over there with the, with a mix with Darren Sutter. That's that would be my concern player. about that one. I don't like I Tyler Pitley at the third line over there. He's um, not. I think you're right, but I th I think that there's still two players that can make this roster this year: Connor Zari and Pelche. Two very high end players. They've had a time to groom them, and. Connor Zari could be a top six, no problem. And he could play center or wing. And then Pelche, I think, is a weird player in that he might be like Dylan Dubé. He might be like a really, really good, fast, skilled guy for the third line that can flex up to the second, but maybe you don't play him on the power play. But either way, those two guys could leapfrog. Like Tyler Pitlick, to me, is nowhere near either of those guys. So if they think that at all out of camp that those guys are physically able to play, I, I could totally see them impacting this lineup in a short term. My only problem for what they have, they lose Giordano. That's what something that could be sure. hurt for them. For sure. Uh, and if Finn have to step up to pick up his his spot over there, right? I don't see that. Um, so I think they, they, they miss their, their, their defense is not strong. Well, it's strong. Michael. It's strong and then it's deep, but they don't have a number one. You know, they, they truly don't have – that was their captain. That was their number one guy. He logs big minutes. I think Noah Hanfin's better on the second pairing. So I think – Yeah, they have a lot of, like, I would say, like, three, four defensemen. Right. I think the the top four were there. They are all four and third, second pair of defensemen. That's, That's my it. point right there. Totally you know, one of that. them can slide like a number of defense too, but it's really, really uh, not great about yeah, that. So I think that's what they are missing a piece, I a big totally piece over that. there. Actually surprised they didn't draft a defenseman in the first round. Um, yeah, so I don't think. I think you have to. Uh, if you don't mind, if you can check all the questions we have, that'll be good to go. Yeah, we pulled them up. Let's see. So, what do you think about Pellick's contract? So, we wanted to talk about this. Adam Pellick signs an absolute monster contract. It's eight years, Pierre, and five point seven. I love it. So, I, listen, I think the reality is he doesn't have a household name, but he's one of these guys where you watch him and you realize this is a very, very good defenseman. To your point when we were talking earlier, he's kind of their number two guy. Ryan Pulak is absolutely their number one, and then it goes to Pellick. They moved out Letty knowing that they were going to give this guy a big contract. So if you project him, he's 27, so he'll be 35 at the end of this deal. I don't know how it's structured. I feel like eight years is too it's long. It's all 5.75 AAV. Yeah, but I don't know how it's structured, right? Like, I don't know what is it. Is it front-end loaded or is it? It's is all, it no, it's all 5.75. Yeah, so that that could really be something that in the later years of this contract, you're going to really regret because this is a defenseman that is more of a defensive defenseman. He's not going to get you a lot of points. He blocks a lot of shots, I think. He's physical. And at 33, 34, 35, you might regret this a little bit. <laughs> well, what happened about this, Michael? If you give him a five-year five contract, you're going to get him a little bit more money. So right. for him, really? uh, you, you you save about that one over there. Maybe. I think for me, it's what he bring on the table. And at that moment, when he's going to be 34, 33, 35, right, the money is going to be now in eight years, the salary, because you don't know, but the, the NHL pushed the salary now for the next five years higher. And um, 
at that moment, he would be a, a good as a third or fourth defenseman. And almost everybody that at that moment is going to be about four million, five million dollars. So I think for me, it's a good, it's a good way. Um, I think Lamario did a good job about that one over there. Yeah, I, it's okay. I, I don't love it. I think it'll be something they'll have to discard later on. And I don't know if he did he get a no movement clause? He didn't not get a no movement clause, Pierre. Nothing. That's what Lamario is. Lamario is going to get it's like nope. <laughs> that's how he is. So he is okay, he's strong about that. That's what I said for me is a good deal yeah. for that part over there. At and twenty six and twenty uh, hold on. Next year, Michael, the, it's $1 million for the next three years. The salary cap increase at $3 million. And then after that, 25 to 26, the salary cap will be at $91 million. So when he's going to get at 27, 28, the salary cap will be at $95 million. So his salary My is not going right. to be hurt at the end. Good morning, Zachary Weiss. Thank you for joining us. Enor Tap had a good point here. He said that six years would have been appropriate. I do agree with that. I do think that there's value in giving him two years when you have no restrictions about moving him. So this is a contract you can get out from under, either through a buyout or by trading it. So the so uh, if he go that way, if they go that way at six million, you have to increase his salary about one million dollars about. Man, that would, I, I'm so surprised he's in that range, but maybe maybe it's true. He is a very good defenseman. So I think I think this is probably going to help them definitely in the short term to have him there. Um, of course, I agree with you, Michael, the, the yeah. last two years. But that's the, the, the everybody's signed a contract this year, six year and plus, right? Yeah. And same like Dano, six year. You're going to see Dano then after the year number three or four, he struggled. If everybody get there at least you're 21, 22, 23 years yeah. old. But everybody's signing at 27. Like Lester Gag, Michael, he's going to struggle the last two years of his contract. It's just part of what it is. He he might, you know, like he it, it he could go over that peak where his body just is, you know, not the same, right? And that that's what could happen. So if you look at their D though, they've got Pelic and Pulak are the one and two. Noah Dobson's absolutely a number three that can be a number two. Very similar to Pelic, but maybe a little more offense there. Andy Green is way past his prime. Aho has never been an everyday D for me. But that's the problem they have right now, right? And they need another solid defenseman over there. I think Mankfield should be in the third line on the second pair over there, right? And Dobson play right now on the third line. Yeah, and I, I really like Noah Dobson. Like, he's going to be awesome. Yeah, yeah he, he, he look, 23 maybe. Yep. So he's not a good even, RD. He carry on the park. He's a big physical, a, a big guy. He's six four, I believe something like that. So yeah, right. I think overall he's going to be great. It'll give him wow. about one or two more years. Will be a, a, a top four easily for the Islanders with power play, skill, everything like that. So I like that one. I think that would be great for them to add another defenseman. They're missing Tavon Toes over there. That's uh, what, I think right. that would be great if they could get like a little bit more experience, Michael. I don't they have Andy Green over there at the bottom, I cool, but I think if, if you can get like I don't know, like not say McDonald, but a, a lower salary at four, three, four million dollars, you can add this kid, that player on the top four. I think that we're helping them for sure yeah. with men fail or something like that. And I think like Pelic is twenty one, so that's this is a real good young defenseman i have no or not pelic 21 uh, pelic. there you go no, I, no, I, I was going to say 22 but i was not sure so i, I love this kid I, I watch him during the playoff he have a, a great opportunity again he's going to be great on power play michael he's good. uh you get him you get well that but it's just again them they need a defenseman to get a little bit pushing a little bit farther for sure just see. remember they trade a uh, nick lady lady over there that's what the, the problem they get now at that position at that position yeah, they they traded Letty knowing that they're gonna have to pay Pelic. So I'm trying to think of what other prospects they have, but if they have anyone that's on the cusp, and I don't know if they do or not, I'd have to take a little closer look at their cap here. Uh, I don't know what uh, everybody's telling me about this all the time about um, about Uberdo's leaving. Uberdo guy is not going to Montreal. Okay. Uberdo is going to be in Florida. Uberdo yeah. is going to get a eight con a eight year contract about. Seventy-two million dollars. 
All right. Now you, you he's to maybe get like six million, five million at the beginning, whatever they like got seven million example. Then after that, he's going to increase when the salary cap is going uh, better at about that one over there. Uh, so Iberdo is going to be that one. I don't know. Um, I don't know what his age is. Uh, Uberdo, I have to look about that. But um, he's like twenty. He's a 90, twenty-eight. Yeah, he's a ninety-two or a ninety-three or something. He's twenty-eight exactly. So Uberdo is going to be at twenty-nine, and 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 he's going maybe twenty thirty, Michael. So I'm not sure he's get a eight years over there. I would expect maybe a six year at eight million dollars. I think that's what he's going to get over there. Barkov, Michael is three years younger to him. And that's Bargov is I'm getting him at nine point five million dollars for eight years. That would be a great bargain. They would try to play the game like the Tampa Bay does. They would try to tell, explain to them, guy, if you want to win here, we we need to be sure the salary cap is lower. We cannot go over ten million dollars, everything like that. So I think for me that would be the big big surprise about. That's what be I was looking talking to them uh, to explain to this because. Remember, it's not only Barkov next year. Venetro at Shirem, don't worry about that part of there. Uh, Tippet, they have to pay him a little bit. Uh, and then the defenseman, they have only uh, Nusivaro. So it's not too bad about the salary for next season, about that they can. So they can pay uh, those two guys I'm talking about. And they open up also uh, Orvis, what he's going to do. Well, Orvis, you have two more years, 5.3. So my point to you, Uberdo, like I said, a six year at eight million dollars because he's twenty. He's going to be thirty for Uberdo Michael uh, Barkov. Uh, at nine point five million dollars, they can get him for five eight years. That would be awesome. He's going to turn around at thirty four years old at that moment. Make seventy two million dollars. Now he's going to figure out at that moment. Oh, I don't care to get seven million, but I want to play with a team winning at that moment. I don't think so. Florida is going to be there at that time at thirty four years old. Yeah, he'll get a retirement contract in Montreal, if anything. He's not going to go during his prime. No, I, I, Uberdo is not going to Montreal. No. I can promise you that. Yeah. I can tell you that. He will try to finish in Florida. The the family live here. The, the kids live here. The brother and sister live here. The dad and mom have a condominium here. He love to be here. Uh, he will accept less money to go anywhere. Um. Talk about the Dante Fabro contract because he re-signed in Nashville. He's two years older than Noah Dobson. Very similar, maybe, but he's not as big, you know, but he's a pretty good 2A defenseman. This seems like the right number for me, 2.4, but it's obviously a bridge contract. Oh, they, that's the right, that's a great number over there. He took the spit, the spot I ran Ellis right now. Uh, I know they bring Philip Myers and uh, the other defenseman, but at the end of the day, they 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 open up the door for him. Uh, the Nashville player, Michael, are on the reduce, reduce salary, so uh, they have to. If you look about the cap friendly, they are about sixty million dollars over cap. I think so. They they are below the cap, and uh, that's what I think they got a memo for the owners for the next two years. We have to. We cannot spend too much money. We have to get so I'll be not surprised to get something like I don't know another five, six million dollars lower, but they will get at least a ten million dollars uh open up. They had the to Tovenin, I pay only. And as the team right now on the transition at some point, next year they have a lot of UF free, uh, you know, at uh, at home, maybe doing that. So I think for me, and then Forsbury. So that two big contract they have to fill up to the following year about that one. I just don't like what David po Poy, uh, Poy, whatever you call him, uh, he does for the last couple of years. So they bad contract, bad trade, everything like that. But uh, it's a thing right now on the transition, um, not rebuilding all the way, but not, you know, uh, also um, they, they try to win, but uh, I think they want to satisfy the, the, the customer or the fans over there. But at the end of the day, I believe um, the team, um, it's right. I think he got a memo. That's my point here behind the bench, about behind my upset. Is Lungo confirmed all of them or did they let the instruction I lose next year? Play, or in, uh, yeah, Lungo is going to be a Hall of Famer for sure. I know a problem. Seven members in the house this morning. Welcome back, Stephen. By the way, Stephen, uh, Canada beats Sweden, but I don't really care about soccer, but just let you know that about that one. There. Is Nashville doing what the Panthers did last season? Yeah. Uh, not really. 
um, I don't know what he's made by this, by performance or by the by, by the player. I don't think so. I think they are still uh, behind that. Yeah, Nashville is a weird situation for me. I don't. You're wasting Philip Forsberg's career. Matt Duchesne is what I've always known about Matt Duchesne, which is I was like, I would never sign Matt to that type of contract. He just he's too comfortable of a player. Johansson, you know, like I liked him, but I don't think he's ever reached the level that we would want. Like he's not an eight million dollar centerman, but he's a good centerman. Like you like a lot of the stuff he does. He's a prototypical big guy. He can produce offensively, but he goes in long periods where he disappears. So you can't have that from a number one guy. When they made the playoff run, Pierre, he was a beast. <laughs> he was an absolute monster. Um, all right. I do want to talk about the 2004 uh, prospects. So, and unfortunately, I have a call. So we have about 15 minutes just to kind of talk about who the top players are for the 2022 NHL draft. And I'm thinking, let's see. Maybe what we'll do is let's just kind of make a list and talk through them. Yeah, the only time you talk about this, uh, Bud and, and Otap talk about Uber, though. And Otap, I can tell you that. I would promise you one thing right now. For the next five years and maybe more, Aaron Eggblad, Uber, though, and Barkov don't go nowhere. I can promise you that. It's uh, blue and white, or whatever you call it. They are not going nowhere. They are Panthers forever they can be. They are three kids, three players. They born together to play in NHL. They grow together here. They are all together, all every day, Michael. In and out, they are on their one condominium to another condominium. Uh, they live close, about one mile each other on the beach around the Fort Lauderdale. I, I, I know them very well on speaking with them a lot. And I don't said want to do maybe one day. The only way they will leave is, is the Panther offer him $5 million. He can get $8, 9000000 million. But what I know, what I see, right, the way they, they, their behavior are, they not go nowhere. They're going to be a Panthers all the way until you reach a Michael uh, age 35, 36, like Perry did, or those guys at that age, they try to find the Stanley Cup. They want to go somewhere else. But otherwise, like Joe Thornton, I don't see three those three amigos to go somewhere. Yeah, I, I, I don't see why you would do that personally. But um, All right, so just looking ahead, these are some of the names. Some of them are more obvious than others to me. Others, I think, are question marks. Uh, I'm not sure how many of these players you've seen play. I think right now, for me, the top guy for sure, though, remains Shane Wright. Yeah. And Shane Wright, for anyone that – watches for example and nathan mckinnon i would say is like a clone of nathan mckinnon he's a right shot forward he can play center he can play wing he's stout he's like six foot 205 pounds got a rocket of a shot his edge work is very similar to a connor mcdavid he's like kind of a tilty can change on a dime and he can pick up speed without slowing down to make moves in traffic um, he had a great rookie year in the OHL and then last year pretty much didn't play Pierre, <laughs> but we got to see him at the under 18s where Canada <laughs> were led by a 15 and a 16 year old. One was Shane Wright. The other one was Connor Bedard. <laughs> yeah. And I mean, if you, if you picked him, if you were allowed to draft him today, I would argue he would have gone first overall in the past draft. I mean, to me, this is a guy that you can build a team around. You can make him, I and mean, it might take a little time, just like Nathan McKinnon did. But he, for me, like, this is like, I think this is why you see teams like Arizona are just stripping out their lineup and why Detroit's not in a big hurry to get super competitive. This is the type of player you can drop into one of those teams and he can change the course of your team. He can be the final franchise type piece. Yep. I don't know if he's Connor McDavid. But I think he's definitely like on the edge of that realm of Nathan McKinnon, and that and it might take a little time. Oh, he is a type like that. So I, I believe he's a type close for that one. There, step over like Jack Hughes and the Urshar, right? Those those top line, the top draft. I think he they are the he's a guy close to more like Connor McDavid. Um, you know, 
you know, I know Mitch Marner, he did, he did not go high, but I think he's the kind of player he can become like a little bit better to make Mitch Marner, but that's the kind of player I see him. He's more of a shooter, though. Like, he is a rocket of a shot. Oh, yeah, 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 for sure. It's just like the, 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 you know, the type of play he is, like, I don't know the size he is. He's a bit, bit taller, like 6'1 right big, now, but uh, yeah. still, um, I don't see him. Like, I'm, my point was trying to see, like, he's not Austin Matthews. That's my, I was trying to compare, like, uh, I was looking yeah. for Toronto, okay. He's more like the guy, like, more like a match Marner. And not, I was not trying to say he looked like Austin Matthews. I tried to compare to someone. But I think he's a one notch under below Con Conor McDavid. But he's yeah. a guy who's going to be a, a franchise player yeah. for sure. Uh, you know, a Jack Eagle situation. Um, uh, I think the thing about he's not tall. He's six foot, but he's like 205 pounds, Pierre. He, if you see this kid, he was physically mature. And it was funny. Yeah, right now he's set, he's set up at 161, 187. That's where he is right now, born on January 5th in 2004. Uh, I think he's heavier than that. But <laughs> well, that's what they, they they got him right now in the on is the, that it? Well, first of all, I'm actually surprised he's six one. So this is one of those guys where he was he was like when he was in the GTHL in Toronto, he was he was a little bit bigger and stronger than everybody. And people were like, Well, maybe he's not that good, maybe he's just big. Wow, yeah, you're right. Six one, one eighty seven. I honestly think he's two hundred pounds, Pierre. He's he's a thick player. And the fact that if he is truly 6'1", then he's a little bigger than I thought. So he's more, this is more Connor McDavid size. But I think if you see him next to Connor, he's a thicker kid. I don't know that he's a franchise talent is going I to be on that. I, I don't see anybody close to him right now to well, put him yeah. out. The only yeah. thing I would say after that is a Russian kid. But otherwise, he's the number one over there for sure. Well, and are you talking about Michkov? I'm talking about... Um, Matt now, um, well, uh, Miroshnevnikchenko. Oh, okay. So that's a good player to talk about. Um, because right. the next one is a uh, 2020 23. You talk about, yeah. So, have you seen this player play first of all? Who Miroshenko? Yeah, I watched him in the H, um, Linko, uh, Linko, uh, Linka? yeah, doing so well. You know, he's he another one, same size like Shea, 6'1 at 185. Uh, he is a great, great. It is another Russian player, right? Is a natural, a natural scorer, a goal scorer. The guy can do really powerful with his homework edge. Is great. Um, skater with feet. His power skating is very good. About that one over there. Uh, you have a great, great little shot, and you know he really is a puck. Michael is really great. Yeah, he has the accuracy is pretty amazing. So he's great. You know, what I mean, like he's going to be top eight. But he's the kid a little bit like this year, like Mason McDavis, right? He jumped from uh, all the way at, at the beginning or all way, all year at three, uh, six, seven, eight, nine, and then he jumped at the third at the end. That's what I'm looking about, Miroshninko. Yep. Can he pass Brad Lambert? I'm not sure yet, I so. but I see him very easily top, top five for sure about that one over there. See, when you talk about Mitch Marner, I feel like – Brad Lambert is a lowercase Mitch Marner. Mitch, Brad Lambert reminds me of Lucas Raymond as well, uh, but maybe without the forechecking and speed. So that's why I'm kind of questioning what Brad Lambert is. We know he can slice and dice. He can handle the puck. The power play runs through him in Finland. Uh, just on one sec, like Miroshenko is an excellent prospect. I suspect that he'll be kind of top five, top six at this point. And yeah, but uh, yeah, I agree with you. Like I said, I'm no, but I would not be surprised. Is at the end of the uh, like at the he next be year, it will be draft be, uh, above five. Like he became Maybe. third, four, and five. You know, man, I don't. He has the potential, my, Michael, to be number two. I but agree. I don't know what he's going to reach this. But would be interesting. My problem it should be Brett Lambert number two. But again, he's only six foot right now. Is a 2003. Uh, is 180 pounds. Uh, yeah. Did I do like you know seven goal lashes game. first year? But good, the kids can play hockey. We turn that yeah. he's going to be a top top six definitely in the NHL. So I don't know what he's going to be his season this year. He have to step up because now he he's an older player. He's going to be to play in the league this year. So um, that's my, my the physicality is maybe one, but he have an amazing great power skating uh, stride. If we turn that. 
for sure. And he's a 2003 because he's a late 2003. So he really should have been drafted this year. And if he went this year up here, I don't know if he's top five. Yeah, you know, I don't compare like this way, but you know, like Ratty, how he str already struggled, we go low, 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 right? I don't see Lambert go there, but I wouldn't be surprised we wake up next year and Lambert is number seven, eight in the draft. That's what I think will happen to this player. I think that people are going to watch him, watch him. They're going to go, hey, he's a year older than everybody, and guys are going to pass him. And that's I, my I point here. But, and again, I'm, I'm, it's, you know, he has everything to be number two. Yeah. That's my point also there. I don't know how he can do that for sure. Uh, Enotap is right. Miroshenko, he has a great hands. He's a really good scorer. Uh, he's going to be a great hockey player like the Richard create all the time. But I agree with you about that one over there. So the, right now we're seeing at the um, Holinka gretzky tournament, these two players, and we've seen them in other tournaments, and we saw them at the World Juniors. Simon Nemec and Yaroslav Slavkovsky would have, in my opinion, gone number one in – two aside from Michkov in the chl import draft but they're both playing professional hockey they're going to get paid to play in their home slovakia these guys are playing against men for the last two years nemec he has the potential i would just say potential to be the second best slovakian defenseman ever if you look at i mean Chara aside, because Chara is a freak of nature and has had, you know, a Hall of Fame career and one cup. So that's a tough guy to compare to. But if you look at guys like Lubomir Viznovsky, Marek Zidlis, you know, you look at the players that have come out of Slovakia defensively. I think he has the potential to be the best guy ever. He dominates on the world stage. He produces about a point a game against men and against his peers. He's got good size, projectable frame, really smart with the puck, can shoot. So this guy, I think, honestly, might end up being the second pick. That, that's the, his potential. Mich, uh, Miroshenko has obviously got the offensive tools, but I think you're more likely to have a longevity without issues of this guy wanting to go in the KHL or something, of him coming to North America. So he's very, very interesting. His teammate, Slavkovsky, is six foot four. <laughs> And he's, he plays like a smaller guy. He's got very high-end skill. He's got lots of moves. He can really skate. Can Will his size play against him? I don't know because sometimes bigger players have a little bit harder time getting their shot off. But so far against his peers, you know, he's very good. Like this is another player that, I don't know, like it just depends on the next season, right? Like, Well, he, he's really strong. First, he's 6'4". Right, mm -hmm. 220 pounds already. Right, mm -hmm. you have a, a score like 13 point assists on the U20. You're going yeah. to see him at the, at the world junior. But a guy go in the corner, Michael, like a like a dagger. He, he is big man, he fought check hard. Uh, you're going to be impressed. You have also a great wrist shot. Uh, so that's what the the, the what they said about him. And I he think that would be really interesting what he's going to do this year. But the guy has everything to become the top five. Uh, pick next season because the size is there. Wouldn't be surprised he finished the year six five. Honestly, uh, uh, two twenty pounds uh, is a right Big. wing. <laughs> you love those guys that play like him, right? So it'd be really, really interesting about him. But Slavkovsky for me is a, a a player we have to look about that. Like Nemec, Nemec is a defenseman. He's yeah. right now the the best defenseman on the draft sure. at that moment. As a two way defenseman, I would be surprised he become the defense one or two and NHL. Uh, for any team, number two. I think for sure you're right. I think Nemec definitely will be a number two. If he's a failure, he'll be a number three. And his potential is he could be a top defenseman in the NHL. He might. I, that's why I say he could be the best Slovakian defenseman ever next to Chara. Yep. So he, he's definitely an enticing. Pro that's why I kind of think he'll go second. But Slavkovsky is teammate. You're right. Like he's a big man but he's got the skills of a small player. So it's going to be very interesting. <laughs> yeah. The second defenseman really close to him on my book or what I have is David Jerecek from uh, Czechoslovakia. Yeah. It's big, another big one, six, three over there. Uh, yeah. I think that's really the one is really close to him uh, about that one. I don't think so. He would beat him, but I, I think he's really close about, I know he was on your list, Jerecek. Uh, Jere yeah. another... So I think that's a good one to mention about him for sure. Yep. Yeah. Um, 
So we didn't quite, I don't know if this is the top eight. I'm not sure what happens after eight, to be honest with you. I think these are kind of the guys I had. Yurov is another Russian guy. He actually scores a little bit more than Miroshenko. I think Miroshenko probably has more top end ability, but Yurov is a very good prospect and I could see him going top eight, no problem. And then Matt- By the way, we have another Jack Hughes this year. <laughs> yeah, not quite as good though. <laughs> no, I just want to mention this is right there. I think after that, you have to go like, I like Sa Savoy, but I yeah. think uh, one one that nobody talk about is uh, Miko, uh, Miko RT for the USH. He played in the USHL. I think that's a big one where they have to look about this. Yorav is great. Uh, Samus Cassie uh, for the USHL with Isaac Oward is the one over there. And then, then in Sweden, Michael, uh, Noah Aslan, um, that's another uh, small center. He's only 5'10", 160 at that moment over there. But I think it'll be interesting to watch him at the World Junior. It's coming like that. And you talk about Sweden. I think Elias Salomonson, defenseman over there, 6'2", 183. That's another thing over there. And finally, uh, Logan Coley for the US USHL uh, is a great that part over there. I, the, the reason I know them, Michael, is because I got... Um, that information from a website and then I make a video. So that's the only thing I really know about yeah. that part. Unfortunately, I have to go, but I think these are all absolutely potential top 10 picks. Um, you know, yeah, it's a, uh, it's a uh, O H L uh, O H L U N D. So, Oh yeah. It's not like, yeah, it's not because you did bad. It's like, but it, you're absolutely right. So I think it's good about that part. I think you know one you could you could add over there is Logan Cooley, C O O L E Y. It's another producer of the USC team. Yeah, that'd be good to keep this for sure about that one over there. But uh, yeah, it was a early. Uh, it's not like an early morning, but it was like a quiet, quiet, um, yeah. quiet morning for everybody. Michael, this next week uh, they, uh, we did not talk about this, but next week we for all week, all week. We do evaluation of the GM next Great. week. I'm so we're going to see what they did. We're not going to go deep talking about the team like uh, we do the, we, we're going to do the evaluation each team, the 32 day and 32 days in September. But next week for five to seven days, we're going to go maybe take four or five GM per day. And we're going to go through the, what they did, the transition, who is in, who is out and evaluate what they did last season. And their off season, everything like that. So we're going to give them a ranking like a A, B, A, B plus, by B minus, everything like that. We're going to select five teams, and I'm going to send to you uh, later today the five team we're going to talk or the four or five team we're going to talk every day so we can prepare about this. But I think it's because of the off season, Michael, that's what it's time to do it. Of course, everybody can talk what they want, you know, bring their comments, but I think it'll be fun to do that, that evaluation to know more about their team. So, uh, Look, guys, we appreciate each one of you. I um, could have to go, but we want to say to you, thank you so much. No show tonight. We are off tonight. The power play is off. We're back tomorrow morning, special weekend. I'm going to reevaluate with a week's resume what's going to happen during the week, Michael. Tomorrow, 11 o'clock, you're welcome to join us. And then Sunday also, because Sunday night I cannot do it. And then we'll be back Monday morning, of course, at 11 o'clock Monday for another great show, The Hockey Nation. I should. If you are here, don't forget to click on the likes. We know August is going to be quiet, Michael. And um, it is what it is. Uh, that's what we are. That's okay. It's going to be busy. I'm, I'm looking forward to evaluating the teams next week. Yep. I will send you the list right now the next couple of minutes. Sounds good. Have a great day, everybody. Have Have everybody. Day. Have an amazing, great day. I look forward to seeing you tomorrow morning at 11 o'clock Eastern time for the special edition weekend of the Power Play Show.